very good effort. Bossy, a good, but not nearly as good as Princeton. No, I think Bossy probably could uh, play a little bit better because the fact they just didn't get out on their fast break. There was a couple of the players didn't uh, uh, play as well as they could, but I think you have to give credit to, to Vincennes for a very outstanding uh, defensive game. You sure do. Derek Dow, a great effort, 39 points this afternoon for Bossy. Well, now let's take a look and see how those two teams tonight got to the final game as Mark Howard tells us about this afternoon competition. It was Princeton from start to finish this morning. Chris Schaefer dealing to Brad Fitcher. Then little Jim Davidson went to work. From the corner and the Tigers were rolling. Schaefer with 17 points using some muscles and then the glass for a deuce, no doubt pleasing Tiger coach Jim Jones. Kip Taylor also chipped in, hitting on an outside jumper for the Tigers, a 64-48 winner over Boonville. And a final spot was there. Could it be the year of the dogs? The bossy Bulldogs think so. They entered the game with a record of 23-0 against Vincennes. Mark Friel steals to Robert Calhoun and home as Bossy led early by six points. Then the main connection, Evie Waddell, down to David Kendrick, to Calhoun, and it's Derek Dahl slam time. But Dahl can do other things as well. Here he'll clear the boards, the outlet to Friel, all the way down and a score. Goodbye to Alice and the Vincennes Alices. Bulldogs on the run, Dow to Calhoun to Dow, showtime. The Bulldogs pull away, 66 to 55, the final score to make their record 24 and up. Boston back at Roberts Stadium with Princeton Tigers head coach Jim Jones. Jim, needless to say, this is going to be a tough one tonight to playing the state's number one team. You played them earlier this year. Uh, anything that you learned from that game that maybe you can use in this one in trying to garner a win? Well, the first two and a half quarters they played his own defense, and after the game, Coach Marlin said that he realized that he was going to have to play a lot of pressure defense after the game, and they went to their full court pressure defense, and our wheels just came apart. We were 29 to 30 with like four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, and they beat us 26 points. To beat Boonville uh, earlier today very soundly. Is uh, the intensity that uh, you had today going to carry over, or is that something that you just have to build since they are a little bit drained? Well, it'll have to carry over if we expect to compete with them. We're going to have to play with the most intensity we've played with all year. We're going to have to really control or try to control the boards and the interior defense if we're going to be able to compete with them. How tough is it to beat that bossy pressure? And what do you have to do to do it? Well, it takes tremendous ball handlers, and it takes kids that are very intelligent because to offset their quickness. Their quickness is just tremendous, and uh, we do not have that kind of quickness. So we just have to use our intelligence and being able to control the ball and getting the ball at the spots where we know people will be standing. Feel uh, safe with outside shooting tonight? Well... Our shooting is decent. Uh, you, you know, you make those statements and then it comes back in your face. But we would like to think that we have very good shooters. And uh, if we can control the ball and get the ball to the people in their spots where they're going to be taking their shots from, then I think we'll be very successful. Okay, best of luck to you, Jim. Thank you very much. Now, the other team in this regional, of course, the state's number one ranked team, the Bossy Bulldogs. Joe Mullen, a familiar face in the Tri-State Coaches Bossy. Joe, uh, with Vincennes today, you played a team that stuck with you uh, till the very end. Uh, was that something that you expected from them? Well, not really. You know, we thought we could, you know, handle them a little bit easier than what we did, but they're an outstanding basketball team, and I just feel like that, you know, they're not far from being where they were two years ago when they went won the state championship. They're without the big man, uh, Witty, but, you know, they've got some talented athletes. They're very disciplined, and they're just a super basketball team. Dowell had a superb game today. Yeah, Derek, you know, he is just awesome. You know, he uh, uh, is unbelievable at times, and today was one of those games where we needed him, and, and, you know, he had 39 points. He was 16 out of 22 from the field, 7 out of 8 from the foul line, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals. Can't say enough for the kid. Let's talk about tonight. Uh, you playing Princeton again. You have played them earlier in the year and didn't have too much of a problem with them. What do you expect tonight from them? Well, the first time we played them in December, we were two points down at halftime, and right. we wound up beating them by about 25 points. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they're a very improved basketball team. I think that the big kids, uh, Victor especially, is improved. Uh, he's a tough inside. He's tough outside. 
Their guard play is what impresses me as far as the improvement factor. They have really improved in their guard play since December. Picker is, of course, the guy that we're going to be looking at since he'll probably have some contact with Dowell tonight. Uh, what are you planning for him? Well, we got something up our sleeve. I'm not going to say at this point, but, you know, people watch the game, they'll, they'll find out when that tip-off takes place. And, and, you know, we just feel like that, you know, he's one of the keys as far as stopping Princeton. As far as your team is concerned, outside of Derek Dow, how does everyone else look, and uh, what are you expecting from them in tonight's target? Well, we're hoping to get, you know, a lot better balance tonight than we did this afternoon. Uh, last Thursday and Friday, or Friday and Saturday, actually, in the sectional, we had tremendous team balance in our scoring, and if we get that tonight, you know, we're going to be in good shape. If we have to rely on Derek again, you know, it, it may be a tough game. Joe Mullen, best of luck to you. This Channel 14 Sports Special, Bossy versus Princeton, live from Roberts Stadium, continues right after this. Special defense is set up here right from the very beginning. See whether uh, Bossy's going to have anything special for Princeton, and Princeton's going to be able to cook up anything special for Boston. You know, I think the consensus among most of the high school coaches that we've talked to today who are out here were that the Princeton Tigers can play Bossy for 16 good minutes. Solid. No problem with that. The problem for Princeton is going to be, can they do it after 16 minutes? Can they keep up with the speed, the quickness, and the agility of the Bossy Bulldogs? If they can do that, we're going to see a very close game tonight, and it is not by any chance uh, out of the realm of possibility that the Princeton Tigers could win this ball game this evening. Well, here come the dogs, and the big dog is leading them, Derek Dow. He had quite an afternoon. It's going to be tough to top what he did. He had a 39-point performance. Mark Friels was the only other Bulldog with more than five points or in double figures. He had 13. As Fossey beat Vincennes, as Chuck mentioned, 66 to 55. You know, Chuck, in that Princeton game earlier, Princeton and Fossey, Princeton came out on this very court. Jim, you may have remembered, they led 12 to nothing. I remember getting that, that score, and I thought, uh-oh. And yet, Bossy still won that ball game by 25 or 26 points, which goes to show you when lightning strikes, it, it strikes quickly. Mike, you just figure that uh, sometime in the course of the game, Bossy's quickness, either on offense or defense, is going to uh, take over. And also, I think uh, something to point out at this point also, Jim, is that the Tigers cannot afford to turn over in this ball game much. It's been the case throughout the season. Uh, those of you who have watched uh, our Channel 14 telecast uh, when we've had Bossy on, once the team turns the ball over to the Bossy Bulldogs, they're giving away at least two points. It seems like that's been the, the case throughout the year, and Princeton's going to have to avoid or at least cut down on those turnovers tonight. We saw it on the college level where U of E felt that they ran out of gas. How about one of these two teams playing? It's the old story about two games on the same day. Jim and Chuck, what are your thoughts about will either team be a little more tired or will it make any difference? Well, I, I think that uh, Princeton with the uh, Victor and probably Victor more than Schaefer, uh, the, they might, it might be telling on them a little bit uh, later in the game because I don't care what you say, uh, you just got a little bit more to carry around out there and it, it does tell on you. You might not uh, say it does, but it'll show a little bit. As you watch the Bossy Bulldogs, they are in rhythm. This is their pregame warm-up and routine. They get with it, and so do their fans. Again, the legions of Bossy fans are here, and we hope that our many of you throughout the Tri-State will enjoy this ball game tonight. This, incidentally, fellas, will be the last game Derek Dowell ever plays at Roberts Stadium. I shouldn't say ever, but uh, certainly as a high school talent, because next week, we put the 14-country fun wagon on the road to Terre Haute to bring you the semi-state. We'll bring you the, the game, the first game, where the Evansville Survivor will meet the Terre Haute winner, and then, of course, the championship game a week from tonight. As for Princeton, we talked again about Victor and Schaefer. You were impressed with Jason Hughes, the guard. Uh, I was just getting ready to say something there, Mike. You know, I think uh, that might be a pretty good little matchup tonight. Calhoun and uh, Jason... Uh, uh, Hughes. Hughes, yeah, Jason Hughes. I think that's a, you know, he played some defense just about all over the floor. It looked like uh, he had the uh, say throw to go anywhere he wanted to because he looked like he was all over there this afternoon. You know, uh, Coach Mullen was a little bit concerned about uh, Calhoun because in the game against Vincennes, Calhoun's man beat him three out of four times. Robert needs to prove not only to his coach but to himself that he can play some good D. And that matchup with uh, Hughes, who is a real floor leader, ought to be a dandy one tonight. 
I was really impressed with Jim Sin's man-to-man defense when they came out. They, I was surprised that they would go against uh, uh, Boston that way, but they did a, a very a fine job. Well, they're going to introduce the entire starting lineup. The home team, I believe, will be the Princeton Tigers, the Bossy Bulldogs in their traveling red or scarlet. And here they come. The first Bulldog introduced, number 20, Bossy Bulldog, number 14, 6'1", senior David Kendrick. Kendrick averaging about eight points per contest. Evie Waddell, number 44. A 6'3", junior, 8.8 rebounds. Very steady, all-around, top-notch player. The big man, senior, 6'6", averaging 27 points per game, Derek Dowell. At the guard, number 10. He's come on brilliantly the last couple of weeks. 5'10", sophomore, Robert Calhoun. And completing the starting lineup, a 6'1", junior, Mark Friel. He, too, has been one of the unsung heroes for the Bossy Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, coached by Joe Mullen, whose record is an incredible 67-5 and five in his three years of coaching. And now for the home team, Princeton Tigers. Coached by Jim Jones, the Tigers coming in off a 64-48 win this afternoon. Six-foot sophomore, Todd Cundiff. A 5'10 senior, number 15, Charles Whittingham. A junior, 5'11 guard, Mike Ramsey. Here's a man that'll come off the bench, one of the first two, a 6'2 sophomore, Joel Warren. Another first or second sub, a 6'2 junior. He'll be on the front line. He's played well of late, Brian Price. A senior, 6'1. He'll play the center position when he gets in there, Stan Karcher. A 6'3 junior, forward, number 43, James Wells. And now the starting lineup for the Princeton Tigers. This is Chris Schaefer, 6'5", junior forward, very fine ball handler, leads the team in assists. The other forward, a 6'2", junior, Kit Taylor. In the center, the big guy, number 41, 6'7", senior, co-captain, Brad Victor. At the guard, number 11, fine outside shot, 6'5", or 5'6", excuse me, Jimmy Davidson. And the man we just talked about, Jason Hughes, number 25, 5'9", and he is a senior. Jim Jones, whom you mentioned, Jim Rouse, one of the most respected coaches in Southern Indiana, does an awfully good job. He, he's down here many, many times, more times than he is not. Yeah, Jim, I, uh, I think he's thought out very highly in the coaching circles of running his cohort. Basically, he had a little bit to do with uh, Larry Bird's era when he started out. In fact, uh, he still comes back. He helped run Bird's camp in the summertime at Spring Valley and, uh, or in Princeton. And it, Bird has a lot of respect for him. What did he say real quickly about the college floor? I didn't get to hear him. Good point. When they played Bossy, Chuck, they used, they put it on the college floor for the stadium. Tonight, Jim, it's the 80, high school length. 84 feet. Is that, a, is that a difference? For, yeah, 10 yeah. feet. 10 <laughs> feet difference makes a lot. Well, we're ready to go. 14 country, nice to have you with us. Mike Blake along with Jim Rouse and Chuck Lofton. High school basketball, the regional finals from Robert Stadium. Two big young men going up in this opening jump. Brad Victor for Princeton and White. Derek Dowell for the Bulldogs in red. Bossy 24-0, the Tigers 19-5, and, and we're underway. Well, right off the bat, we want to see what the special thing they're going to try to do uh, underneath with Victor is. This afternoon, Derek Dowell got in foul trouble early. That is, again, the game plan of... Princeton can pull it off to go to Big D, but the first shot by Mark Friel fails, and Princeton will bring it up. 
Victor. At this level, teams are usually very patient, well-drilled. You don't get by the sectional and much less the regional semifinals unless you're well coached. Waddell is playing uh, Victor head on. So the patient Princeton Tigers waiting things out. That is Taylor. Jim Jones is a Bobby Knight disciple. He uses a lot of the Knight coaching technique. You'll see a lot of the motion. I think we're seeing a similar defense that Boonville used. They yeah. ran the man on uh, Schaefer and Victor and Jones. And Jimmy Davidson hits the first basket of the game, two to nothing. That little guy shoots over 50% from the outside, we understand. And if they can get the ball to him, they have a, a good percentage shot. This afternoon, they laid off of Evie Waddell, Boonville that is. We'll see if they give him a shot. Kendrick turns it over. And it goes back to the Princeton Tigers. Joe Mullen lamented that they had to cut down on the turnovers from this afternoon. So the first turnover is a bossy turnover. As the pressure is applied, as Victor brings it across. A big guy, Brad Victor, the tallest man on the floor at 6'7". To kind of remind you facially of a Bobby Knight. He looks like Knight. And he had quite an afternoon. He had 23 points this afternoon in that victory over Boonville. Schaefer dumps it down to Victor. The turnaround, and it's 4 nothing. So the Bulldogs will look to get on the board. Try to trap Calhoun. Down low to Dow. And Derek Dow puts it up, and it's 4-2. to two. That looks almost impossible to stop when you get him down there. When you get that ball into Dow that close, it's, it, it's almost two points. Jim Sens learned uh, earlier this afternoon they'd have three, four guys on him at a time, and he would still come in. He scored 39 this afternoon. Princeton goes across. Number 45 on the shot. In. Kip Taylor. Taylor with a sky-high bounce. Puts it down through the well, and it's 6-2. to two. Just about three minutes have elapsed. Princeton just got a tough, uh, tight 2-3 zone in there. Bossy, of course, would like to let it fly. Kendrick into the paint, a little short, rebound. Kendrick gets it back, puts it up and in. He, uh, he got off that floor up. mighty high, mighty high. For a kid that had knee problems a couple of weeks ago, he looks, looks pretty strong. David Kendrick. Jimmy Davidson. And he's doing what he does best, shooting well from the outside. It's 8-4, Princeton. Kendrick wanted to go under, back out now. Heavy and Waddell call for traveling. And Joe Mullen wants to talk things over. A timeout with 4-13 remaining. Here in the first quarter. You know, Bossy's been in uh, trouble the past three times they've tried to get the ball down the court into setting up for that basket. And I think perhaps Robert Calhoun has been thrown off just a tad because once he gets over that half court line, he's got his man in front of him, but he also has Schaefer coming from the far side across trying to steal the ball away from him. I think it, it jars him just a little bit. Princeton's defense is just taking Bossy out of their flow of offense. Yes, they, they that's are. the whole thing. Their flow of offense is just not there yet. And down here on defense, I think uh, there's just too many holes in this to having a man-to-man -to -man on each one of their big fellows. Uh, you can get that weak side man in there under the basket a little easier. In terms of field goals, Princeton 4-4, four of four, that's pretty good. Bossy is 2-4, of four, and as we've noticed, two turnovers for the Bulldogs. A lot of good basketball going on throughout the Tri-State. Mark Howard will give you an update at halftime, and of course, we'll have all the final scores tonight at 10-20. Somewhat surprised, no foul. It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. Wait till they start opening up a little bit. It'll happen. 
Brad Victor about to bring it in. 4.13 on the clock in the first period. Princeton with a ball and an 8-4 lead. Dubowski's picking up the pressure a little bit now. This is Chris Schaefer. He handles it well for a big guy. Dumps it off to Victor. And the Tigers go up by six. Brad Victor coming off a 23-point performance this afternoon. He's averaging 20 points. Dowell. Derek Dowell, a Fairlawn product. Gets his fourth point, six for Bossy, down to three and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Schaefer stops, turns around, puts it up and in. Well, they know where that basket is, I'll tell you that. Princeton <laughs> shooting awfully well. You know, Schaefer is, is a good scorer. The first game of the year against Wood Memorial, he had 31 points. He is as capable as anyone else is in hitting the bucket. Heavy Waddell. Air ball. Retrieved by Frills. The Dogs will try it again. Frills will try and pull the trigger, and he gets it. Mark Frills. And it's 12 to 8. Bossy back within four as Hughes has to watch the double team. And it goes right through Kit Taylor. Cut it Robert Calhoun with a very fine defensive effort. He came from that blind side. You can't stay too long there without looking to that blind side. Davidson and Hughes talking it over. He Davidson saying, watch it there, Jason. These guys are quick. So Robert Calhoun pauses the turnover. And the Bulldogs will now to get, try to get back within two. Creel down low. A foul. A foul on Princeton. Well, that was just a good example of uh, Princeton's zone was squeezed in so tight on down. And let's take another All look right. at it. Take a look at this. They were so squeezed in on uh, Dow, they left the uh, Creels open, and of course he gets fouled. They're trying to pick him up real quick there, and he gets fouled. Credit Schaefer with the first foul of the ball game as Mark Creels goes to the line, a 65% free throw shooter. And it's a 12-11 Princeton lead, and now the pressure of the Bulldogs. Creels with five points. Davidson with a little one-on-one. -on -one. Calhoun hounding him. And a foul on Mark Creel. In our pregame interview, Jim Jones said that the thing he was most concerned about is handling that bossy pressure. So it's going to be interesting throughout the course of the game to see indeed how they how they do it. So far, they <laughs> in this one play, they're doing all right. So Taylor brings it in. A relatively air-free ball game. I beg your pardon. Talk about putting a whammy on it. Bossy will get it. That was the fourth turnover, I believe, the second here in the last minute by the Tigers. So now the Bulldogs, with 2.20 remaining in the first quarter, can try and take the lead. Waddell, weak side, plays the glass, and Victor gets the rebound. Victor was a terrific factor in rebounding in this afternoon's contest, in addition to his 23 points. Cross, Taylor, doesn't like what he sees, gets it back, Hughes. Robert Taylor with a steal. Tries to go up court and retrieved by Jason Hughes. Schaefer. Into the middle to Victor. Brad Victor with his six points, and it's now 14-11, Princeton. Hughes is a fun kid to watch. He yeah. sure is. He's just all business. Waddell, pretty play, in and out, and a foul on every Waddell. Waddell just needs to make a basket because his confidence is just a little low right now on some of, I think, this afternoon game and the nice to play again on the replay. Uh, you can see that Evie comes over the back, and that was the call. Right. Back to live action. Princeton gets it inbound. Hughes gets it across. They have a minute 20 to work with here, and they've got a three-point lead. Schaefer, he can pull the trigger, bat it around, Waddell gets it, up in a hurry, stolen, Waddell gets it back, Dowell, jam time, and Derek Dowell brings the bossy section off its feet, 14-13 with one minute to go in the first quarter, Schaefer up to Hughes, 
Stands out Taylor. Victor loses it. Taylor gets it back. Taylor jumps it to Victor. Red. That was some nice pass work on that uh, score. Quite a volley as it's down to 35 seconds. Friels loses it, gets it back. Bossy staring at a 16-13 deficit. Nice play, David Kendrick. Bossy back within a point. They'll go for one shot, I would think. Ball goes out, knocked out on a super effort by Kendrick. So it's been a pretty well-played first quarter, of which 20 seconds remain. Princeton with a ball and a one-point 16-15 lead. Who do you let shoot it, guys? Who do you like? I say give it to uh, 11, Davidson. I think that kid has a pretty shot, but he's not going to get it. Again, Calhoun with a steal and a basket. Three seconds to go in the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. We're coming back where Bossy has just taken the lead. 17-60. We'll be right back. It is 17-16. Bossy is the visiting team. They just changed it on the scoreboard. They had it reversed. But the score is the same. Bossy, when you look at the scoreboard, if we show it to you, they are the visiting team. But they are ahead 17-16. Calhoun working into the middle. Victor getting his hand on it. And Rich Davidson bringing it down. You know, the bucket that Calhoun made at the end of the first quarter might be one of the biggest baskets he's made uh, this season. He did not have a good game against Vincennes, and that's just what he needed. Derek Dowell swipes it into the nickel seat. Again, good shooting, eight of nine for the Tigers. Bossy, eight of 13, I believe. And they are one for one in the only free throw. A pretty well air-free, foul-free game. Only one foul. Neither team in trouble. As the Tigers now are picking up the pace. They led much of the first quarter, but trailed on a, as Chuck mentioned, a fine defensive play by Robert Calhoun. Kit Taylor puts it up. Waddell with a quick outlet. Calhoun flying down, jumps it to Kendrick. That's what you keep looking for Bossy to explode with. And Jim Jones says, let's go back to the drawing board. 19-16 is the score as the, the Bulldogs open it up to three points. I think it was a good idea for Jim to call that timeout. Yes, it was. I tell you now, you're just looking for Bossy to get that uh, ball out there. Now, we haven't seen anything like we did earlier in the section where they got two and three uh, men out on the fast break there, but they're starting now to, I know it's a while ago. We're going to see that oh. fast break play again. This is Robert okay. Calhoun driving toward the basket. Makes a nice pass off. Once again, showing, as we saw in the sectional, the, the word keeps coming up, Bossy is very unselfish. You know, I mean, they, they like to dish it off, and everybody gets their assists and so forth. And it's, it's evident that was, in every game they play. That was a good example right there, because he could have got that himself. Jim Jones is well aware, I'm sure, Mike and Jim, that uh, he can't let Bossy run on his team, or they'll run him right off the court. <laughs> they've, got to, uh, they've got to play some strong pressure D. So Princeton now working on a three-point deficit. 640 remaining in the second quarter. Nice to have you with us. Mike Blake along with Chuck Lofton and Jim Roush from the stadium in Evansville. The finals of the Evansville Regional. The winner advancing to the Terre Haute Semi-State. Schaefer down to Victor. Turn around. Bingo. Brad Victor, the game's leading scorer with 10 points as he brings Princeton back within a point. Here's Robert Calhoun setting up shot. Waddell goes right down the middle, gets his own rebound, and that ball won't drop. Dow loses it. And a foul on Mark Friel. The, really, the ball just isn't going in for Eddie Waddell. He is having some tough tough times now you notice here this is kind of a, a silly foul in a way because you just reach in there 
when you're way out on the court like that, I, that's something that you hate to, the coach hates to see. <clears throat> Reels a 6 1 junior. He'll be back as Brad Victor. Jim Jones didn't want to mention that he's, he's playing on some weak tens. The kid's knees hurt, I understand. Yes, uh, they've been giving him some ice treatments in between uh, the uh, Boonville game and this one. They've got to be feeling pretty good right now as Mark Friels counters. Mark Friels playing a fine ball game, seven points as Bossy now back within one, 21 20 with 5.20 to go in the second quarter. Calhoun with the steal goes out of bounds. Calhoun had a terrific sectional final against the North Huskies last week and also, I think, made the key plays of the game against Harrison the night before. He made two steals in 12 seconds. Turned in a six to a 10 point ball game for the Bulldogs at halftime. There's another errant pass. Waddell picks it off. Reels on the shot and he's fouled by Jason Hughes. You know, this Robert Stadium basketball floor has been very busy the past few nights and will be. We had the MCC tournament. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're taking a look at his free play. Uh, it's a nice pass off. And uh, Jason just uh, went up and grabbed too much of the, of the arm and of, of the ball on that. He gave a pretty good argument that he thought he got just the ball. But not so, says the official. And Mark Reels, a very talented junior, goes to the stripe. As we mentioned earlier, 65% foul shooter. He had a three-point play moments ago. And Mark, with his eighth point, was an elementary talent at Glenwood. Perhaps you've been reading about where he wants to work on the weights this summer. He's a Division I prospect, but he, he said, I got to get meatier. I got to get a little fatter. And he makes it a three point bossy lead, 23 to 20. Hughes. So Jason Hughes does his job, gets it across. We have a new. Base number 23, Joel Warren is in for the Tigers. Victor with a hot hand is wrong. Schaefer with a rebound, turnaround. Beautiful turnaround shot there by Schaefer. Chris Schaefer with four points. 4.30 to go in the half or second quarter. Again, Bossy with a big 26-point win earlier this year over Princeton as Evie Waddell breaks the strike spell. And now all five Bulldogs have scored. And a foul on Robert Calhoun. We were going to talk a minute ago, uh, Mike, about what's been going on in Robert Stadium. We've had the MCC tourney with last night's Xavier and a dramatic win over Loyola. We've got the, uh, the regionals. This place is almost packed for that. And then we have the NCAA tournament coming up on the period of a couple of weeks. It ought to be exciting tomorrow to find out just who will be coming here. There's been rumors that... The Indiana Hoosiers might be coming to town. It would be, believe me, there's not going to be an empty seat anyway, but it'll really be something if Knight and company do come down here. Here's Kit Taylor. Goaltending. Goaltending call. The basket is good by Kit Taylor. And it's now a 25-24 bossy lead. Kip Taylor with his fourth point. I think there's a good example where you see that weak side is open over there when they make that long pass over. Jim Jones up directing traffic for his Tigers. From the corner, Mark Friel, little on. Kendrick on the turnaround. Waddell got his hand, the ball's knocked out of bounds. And it's going to Princeton. Princeton will get the basketball. Taylor will bring it in. 3.30 to go in the second quarter. Victor gets it back and puts it in. You know, the Tigers have done what they uh, planned to do. They've hung in there. They have not been afraid to shoot from the outside rather than take a, a, a risk of going inside. 14 points for Brad Victor as the Princeton Tigers are back on top. The 
Bossy fans wanted a foul on Joel Warren. No whistle. Mark Friel pulls the trigger from the side again. Friel's having a very fine ball game. 11 points. Down goes Taylor. Down to 245 in the, in the second quarter. Victor loses it. And a foul. I think a frustrated Brad Victor commits the foul. That's his first, his team's third foul. Derek Dowell has no personal, so the two big guys can stick around as long as they want, at least right now. Mark Friels. Somebody better get on Friels if Princeton is going to stick around here. He's hot as fire from that corner. The basket is good, a foul. I didn't pick that out beforehand there, but it must have been uh, just a little over aggressiveness on Victor on the defense. So now Brad Victor has got to be careful. All of a sudden, he picked up his second personal in a matter of about 30 seconds. It's 29 26, the Bulldogs. Behind the fine shooting of Mark Friel. 13 points for Friel. A 29-26 lead for Bossy. Almost down to two minutes, 2.05. Robert Calhoun with his first shot from out is short. Waddell gets it back. Waddell dumps it down into the paint. Once again, Friels is just uh, a super shot by Friels. That was just beautiful. He just kept that body under control and looked twisted it right in. He really has, he's really into this game tonight. Schaefer loses it and a ball goes out. Bossy's defense down there pretty much looks like uh, Dow's covering a zone in there and the rest of them are playing man to man it almost looks like. A minute 34 remaining in the second quarter. Schaefer working around Dow. Calhoun throws it up a little bit. He probably wanted to go down to Friels, but decides against it, and will set it up. 31-26, Bossy suddenly in command with a five-point lead. A minute 15 remaining. Dow draws a real crowd, no whistle. Dumps it back in, Kendrick. They are re really letting him go at it. And the ball goes out of bounds, it'll be Princeton's ball. A lot of contact underneath that goal in. Yeah, it seems like they don't want to blow the whistle. Let's, let's look at it again. There's a lot of bumping. Boy, Victor's lucky he did not get his third foul yeah, right there. He sure was. That's one of the things this year I've been seeing more calls on the rebound. Uh, over their shoulders, it seems like that's been called so much in these games. So Victor will go to the line. Victor with his 15 points. He had 37 points against Harrison. He's also been over 30 a couple of other times. And the young man is having quite a first half here. He's keeping the Tigers in the contest. 31 to 28, one minute to go in the half. Calhoun. Robert Calhoun. Sophomore out of Glenwood with his fifth point of the night, fourth point. He averages five, so he's right there. 40 seconds to go. Again, a five-point bossy lead. Schaefer down to Victor. Brad Victor, 18 points here in the first half. 23 seconds. Again, Calhoun. Schaefer tries to win the race, goes out of bounds. It'll be Bossy's ball. Down to 14 seconds. Princeton fans hoping 
to keep it where it is or if they can get the ball back. Bossy will try to go into the locker room with a five-point lead. Kendrick goes down. Six seconds. Creel. Mark Creel. And that should do it. That's the end of the half. We're coming back in just a moment where the top-ranked Bossy Bulldogs lead the Princeton Tigers 35-30. to 30. Championship 35-30 bossy over Princeton. Jim Roush, a good first half. A good first half, but, uh, you know, uh, I think Bossy's, uh, maybe their defense down there was a little unsettled there at first because some of those, uh, Victor and Schaefer were getting open a little bit. It looked like they had something special set up for them, but I think they were just getting a little, a little open a little bit too uh, easy. Uh, go ahead. The last guy, uh, you know, the last guy I would think I'd want shooting the ball, Chuck, uh, if I were Princeton, was Mark Friel. What a half he had, and also, of course, Brad Fisher the other way. He has been hot from the corner, and Fisher has been very effective inside against Derek Dow. I think maybe that might be surprising a few people. But the fact that Princeton is within five points is good for them. They have kept in this ball game and have even had the lead on and off. As we mentioned, Victor with 18 points, Friels with 17. As we say, a lot more good basketball coming your way. But right now, it's a big night throughout the Tri-State, throughout the country. In high school and time, you're truly Mike Blake with UE head coach Dick Walters. Dick, it's nice to sit and watch a game for a change. Uh, your assessment of this first half. Mike, it's a very good basketball game. The bossy's quickness has certainly been a factor, and they're playing good basketball. I think Princeton's done a relatively good job of keeping it out of Derek Dahl's hands. Uh, I think if Princeton can get this to be a half-court game, they'll be in it uh, because they play very well in that situation. Uh, if they could uh, get the ball and try to force Calhoun from Bossy to shoot it a little bit more rather than allowing Mark uh, Friels to shoot it, uh, it would make a, a big difference in this game because Friels is a much better out, uh, outside shooter at this point in his career in all due respect to uh, Robert Calhoun. This, uh, this afternoon you talked about you're impressed with Chris Schaefer. Can you envision him as a guard in college ball or is he going to be even as good as a forward? Uh, he's too small to be a forward uh, probably at our level, but he's going to be an excellent guard. I really like the way he plays. He's not flashy. Uh, but he gets all the uh, essential things done. And, of course, Brad Victor, he's going to do some good for somebody. Mike, he's definitely a college prospect. He's come a long way. I, this is the second time I've seen Princeton, and, and he's really improved over the year, and he's definitely a college prospect. I like him a lot. He, he uh, has a fine touch around the hoop. Dick, now that the season is officially over, one thing, what will you be doing this next week before the NCAA? It's not going to be just a ho-hum week. Where are you heading? Mike, I'm going to go to Hutchinson, Kansas and watch the uh, junior college finals out there. And then from there, I'll go to California and watch the uh, junior college uh, state finals in California. As you know, California is not a member of the National Junior College Athletic Association. It's such a big state. There's so many great players. So we'll do that. Of course, we'll be attending all of the, uh, the games here in high school. And then I hope to be back in town for the NCAA uh, regional here at Roberts Stadium. Listen, appreciate your taking the time. Happy to be here, Enjoy man. the second half. All right, thank you. UE coach Dick Walters. Chuck and Jim, what happened in the first half? The yeah, first... Ah, here we are, back. Oh, he's back. We had a very good first half, of course, Mike. Uh, the score, 35 to 30. Mark Friels. For Bossy, pumped in 17 points, and he is the leading scorer. Ironically, Derek Dow, who had 39 points, Jim, in the, in the uh, first game of this regional, has been uh, limited to six points. He's still been a factor, though. David Kendrick with six. Robert Calhoun has four points. Evie Waddell, too. Now, for the Princeton Tigers, the man that we have been uh, watching has been Brad Fichter. He has 18 points. Jim Davidson, the uh, young junior, the short little guy with a nice touch has four points as does Kit Taylor and Chris Schaefer. Princeton's been shooting very uh, well. Princeton has an uncanny shooting percentage here. Uh, they've made 14 out of 18 uh, field goals and the free throws has been two for three. Uh, Bossy on the other hand has had 16 for 30 uh, and a three out of three from the free throw line. Like you said I think you know of course Friels uh, is, has kept Bossy going there because uh, Dow has been cut off pretty good in the middle. All right, we've got a good game uh, in the second half to go. This Channel 14 Sports Special. Princeton versus Bossy live from Robert Stadium continues right after this. And we're 
back almost for the start of the second half. While we've got the chance, don't forget tomorrow. College basketball at its best, the ACC championship at 12 noon, followed by the Bay Hill Golf Classic. We'll take you to Florida at 2 o'clock, then Sports World at 4 next Saturday. Hope you'll join us from Terre Haute, where tonight's winner will meet the winner of the Terre Haute Regional. Also, Washington and Seymour will be... Those winners will be advancing as well. Second half underway here, 35-30. The bossy, unbeaten Bulldogs, top rank with a five-point lead, taking on the Princeton Tigers. The Tigers held or were behind by one point at the end of the first quarter. The ball in the air, and again, bossy controls it. Mark Freels with a very hot hand in the first half. Jim, you think Bossy's going to have a very conventional defense in the second I, I'm anxious to see what Bossy sets up in defense. They get, oh, Dow right. goes under and a foul on number 45, Chip Taylor. He moved under, uh, I think you can see this very easily. He moved under uh, Dow as he was going up. What Taylor pay for it too when Dowell comes down with the ball? Watch, bam. <laughs> So they try it again, and Derek Dow puts it in. Dow with his eighth point of the night, and Bossy up by seven. Jimmy Davidson, first time he has shot from out in a long time, and Evie Waddell with a rebound. The Dogs want to open it up here. Freels, a foul on Jason Hughes. So Bossy. Picking up the pace and getting some results early here as we watch it again. Pass in to Freels. Freels looks like he's been he's going to shoot the ball, but he gives him a little fake. Moves around there and lots of, lots of hands up there and makes contact. Freels had three points from the free throw line for his 17-point effort in the first half. And he's leaving, starting out where he left off. Mark Freels, fine performance here in the early going of the second half, the third quarter, 38-30, Bossy. Bulldogs trying for their 25th in a row as Victor gets the rebound. Down low, a nice pass, Schaefer, and a foul on Derek Dow. Boy, that Schaefer has some moves, doesn't he? The basket is good, yes he does. Well, the pass up, uh, Taylor looking Schaefer, for, there he is, he, he makes a little fake, goes on his back a little bit, makes contact. Chris Schaefer with a six point will now try for his seventh as Dowell picks up his first personal. It's a 38-32 ball game. Batted around and Derek Dowell with a rebound. Dow averages 11 rebounds to go along with his 26 points per game average. Reels cross to Kendrick. And Dave Kendrick has the shot. Eight points for Kendrick. Bossy back up by eight. You're watching high school regional action on WFIE TV, Channel 14, Evansville, Indiana. Hughes down to Schaefer. Again, the whistle. A foul on Waddell, and the basket is good. This is almost a duplicate of the play while ago. Made a little fake. Makes the pass into Schaefer. Makes his little fake. Goes up. Makes contact. Gets the ball off. Beautiful. That's a beautiful move. You know, it takes as much talent to be able to draw those fouls as it, as it does any other factor of the game. This time, Chris Schaefer converts on the three-pointer. He has nine points, and it's a five-point, 40, 35, bossy lead. Six and a half minutes to go in the third period. Derek Dow wants the shot. Won't go. Waddell is there. Every Waddell. I think this pace is getting more to Bossy's uh, liking to play. This is their type of game now they're playing. 
Yeah, Princeton does not have the quickness uh, that the Bulldogs do. Jimmy Davidson. Back to Davidson. He'll pull the trigger. Pat it around. Calhoun looks up. Nice pass to Friel. No basket. Traveling. No basket. A turnover after a very nice pass from Robert Calhoun. Here it is again. This is looking like the uh, bossy uh, of the sectional getting about three or four men out. Back to live action as Schaefer has it inbound. A whistle. A timeout called by Princeton. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. I think, again, uh, Jim Jones knows when to call timeouts, and I think this one is necessary. I think he's just starting to feel like we do, that we're getting into the bossy type game here now, and he doesn't want to do that. Again, I'm impressed with the composure of Bossy. I mean, you can, everyone, you know, kids are going to look rattled, but boy, Calhoun looks like an iceberg out there, doesn't yeah. he? And Waddell's hang, hanging in there. He, his shots haven't been falling quite right, but he's trying to get himself in the beach just like on that rebound there. He got it up there for the easy one. He's having a little tough time there, but I think he's finding himself. Again, some field goal shooting this half. Princeton, two of four. Bossy, three of four. And there's the boss dog, the boss of the Kennel Club, Mr. Macon. There he is, bang, bang. You're dead, Tigers, so he says. <laughs> he is one very interesting character. He the is father. the life of the party. He sure is. Macon Dow, the boss dog. Well, right now, Kit Taylor inbounds it for the Princeton Tigers, who have their work cut out for them, over and back as Davidson loses it. Just feel that the temple's picked up a little bit now. Yes, and uh, that's not what the Tigers want no. at this point either. Dow dumps it down to Kendrick, and David Kendrick puts it in. Officials momentary timeout. Now back. I would think they'd want to get it into Hughes's hands, which they do. Finally, Victor pulls, pulls the shot from the side and puts it in. 20 points for Brad Victor. 44-37, Bossy by seven, and a foul on Jim Davidson. You know, we went to, uh, after we watched this uh, replay, Calhoun bringing the ball down on the last last play. Just couldn't keep uh, in front of him enough there to want to issue quick, quick congratulations to the Lawrenceville Indians who are in the class finals tonight in Illinois and Champaign and also the McLeansboro Foxes, another Southern Illinois team that made it to the final four. Dow. Waddell dumps it back to Dow and Dow puts it in. As we've seen so many times, you can't let the Bulldogs patty kick it around underneath. Eventually, it's going to go in. And now, they've opened it up to a 9-point, 46-37 advantage. 4.45 go in the third period. Princeton has got to be careful. The doors can come off very quickly. Kendrick retrieves the air ball. Turns it around. Kendrick bats it. Reels now. Can't get it. And Victor leaves the board. And a foul on Derek Dow. Derek Dow picks a foul. You know, Victor Dow was really a, hanging in there. Yeah. He's just a little over aggressive on that. As you can see here. Here he is now. Bam. A little flat. I wouldn't get him a black belt, but <laughs> he's uh, it's a pretty good job. 4.20 to go in the third period. 46-37. The Tigers coming up. Schaefer loses it. Kendrick to Calhoun to Kendrick. Schaefer gets the ball down and travel. Chris Schaefer having his problem. The Bulldogs get it back. A lot of bodies on the floor then. 
Listen, when one player goes down and sweats on there, that's what causes all that uh, falling. I said he traveled. He actually set his foot on the end line. Dow. Derek Dow. 12 points. The senior. Warren brings it across. Looks for help. Loses it. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be the Bulldogs basketball. 48 to 37 as Jim Jones pleads his case. But to no avail, I'm sure. For this time down the court, the ball goes over to Bossy. 345 remaining in the third period. Waddell can't hang on to it. Traveling, it'll go back to Princeton. We're seeing some sloppy basketball here. Brian Price, number 31, has come in for Princeton. Warren to Victor. Waddell with a rebound. There's nothing wrong. Whoops. And there's a foul on Derek Dow. I started to say whoops as Jason Hughes took it. So Dow becomes a first person to get three fouls in the contest. That could change the complexion uh, considerably, of course. 327 to go. Bossy with an 11 point lead. There's the brain trust. Malakote, Mason, and Mullen, the three M's. As they're looking at still another strong bossy effort, but they're not out of the woods yet. From the side, Brian Price, air ball. Dow on the release to Friel. Boy, he made a nice recovery after he almost lost the ball. 20 points for Mark Friel's on a timeout. Princeton wants to talk things over. 3.05 remaining in the third period. That's when you, uh, you feel like Bossy's going to start moving out ahead here between to get that fast break going. Here it is now. Watch the fast break. These guys do it as well as any in high school. Dow, bingo, up to Friels. This is the amazing part. Once he loses the ball, bam. He, he has to make great recovery. You know, he look, hangs in there, gets his balance. Mark Friels with that basket has 20 points. He and Brad Victor continue to be the high point people as you look at the cheerleaders. Those are from the bossy contingent. Well, Jim, you're down by 13 points if you're Jim Jones. Why do you tell you? Well, I think points. you're going to have to pull out all stops now. We're going to have to go, uh, of course, we're going to play right into Bossy's hands, whatever you try to do now to try to get those points back on the board. Uh, pressure, of course, that's what you go to. Of course, they do have a good uh, uh, zone press. They showed that this afternoon. Yes, against zone press. Mm -hmm. The latest in news, weather and sports tonight at 10. Ann Osmond, Bill Ray, and Mark Howard coming your way. Well, there's lots more basketball between now and then. 3.05 remaining in the third period. The Princeton Tigers trying to get back in this contest. Jason Hughes almost loses it. They've got a lot of work to do. They trail 50-37. And a foul on Evie Waddell. The official says you're holding. So Evie gets his third personal. Waddell at 6'3", that's a big assignment trying to keep Victor away from the hall. He is 6'7". Victor has several colleges watching him. And he has certainly encouraged all of them this afternoon and again tonight. Victor puts it up and in. Brad has, has really played well against Derek Dowell tonight. I know that was a big concern of the Tigers fans. Of course, he's got most of his points from out. Just right. in that little that's true. 12, 15 foot range. 245 going in here in the third period. Bossy sitting on an 11 point lead. The Bulldogs with a big win over Princeton on the same court a couple of months ago. We'll take any kind of a victory tonight. Nice teamwork from Kendrick to Waddell to the basket. Joe Mullen wanted a foul call as Waddell puts it in. Waddell gets it back. 
Waddell puts it up and in. Another whistle and a foul on Eddie Waddell. So it turned out to be a profitable but costly trip down the court for Eddie Waddell. He just makes contact in there. He just uh, can't control his uh, forward motion. And he just makes contact, runs into him. He's, he paid for that a little bit. So that's four on number 44, and that brings Chet Chestnut. Jeff Chestnut off the bench. Waddell will take a seat. Once again, we don't have the attendance as yet. They had 7,800. They've got a very nice crowd again tonight as Hughes puts it up and in. That's his first point, fellas, of the night. That is surprising. Sure is. And well below is nine-point average. And they're back within 13 with 2.17 to go in the, in the third period. Bossy trying to advance to the opening game of the semi-state where they'll meet the winner of the Terre Haute Cloverdale game. Kendrick goes in, two bodies go down, and a foul on David Kendrick. That's Kendrick first. Let's watch it one more time. It's just a matter of driving in there, and his forward motion carries him right into the defensive player, and he makes contact. So going to the line for the first time will be Brian Price. He's a junior. Very valuable replacement for the Tigers. Jim Jones says he's been a positive influence on his club. He's only a junior, and he puts in his first free throw and his first point of the ball game. 54-42. The Tigers trail by 12 as the Bulldogs have looked good here in the third period. Down to two minutes. I thought we might see just a little bit more pressure by Princeton, but so far, it's just more or less a token pressure, pressure out with the guard. Mark Creel, short. Hughes now in a foot race. Takes it all the way up. Creel for the rebound. Chestnut fans out to Dow. Dow on the turnaround. Oh. Boy, oh boy, what, well, you, what a shot. He passed that ball in the last moment. He just decided to shoot it. That's not in the textbook. Well, as, as Derek Dow gets his 14th point of the night on a pretty, pretty shot. Friels is hobbling off the court. He's sitting down now. They're tending to his right ankle. And uh, Chris Johnson, number 20, is going to be coming back in the ball game. He's a 5'11 junior. That's right. There you see Friels being attended to. I think he just got a muscle cramp. For his sake, they certainly hope so, as Chris Schaefer takes it into the middle and puts it up. Schaefer with 11 points. He averages 14. Calhoun goes around, down to a minute 15. Bossy with an 11-point lead and the ball. They led by five at the half. Calhoun loses it, gets it back. Kendrick down to Dow. And a foul on Derek Dow. A big foul. 59 seconds to go in the fourth and the third period. Dow picks up number four. Well, that was a good call. I mean, they had a suffocating defense on him. Three men around him, but he, you know, you just can't push. He did make contact. Boy, a tough, tough call. Well, there's not much you can do. They were all over him like a cheap right. suit, as the old uh, expression goes. And uh, I know sometimes you feel like they're not giving them enough room in there on that, but that. Well, Dow, who's like a coach on the court, he does everything but make substitution. He leaves the. Uh, he made his feelings known when he left the court. He fired these guys up. You were right, Jim. Apparently, was only a muscle pull, or I mean, a muscle spasm. So, Evie Waddell is back, and Princeton is back within 10, 56, 46, as Mr. Price cashes in his third free throw. A 
Again, tomorrow, ACC Championship Basketball at noon. The Bay Hill Golf Classic from Florida at 2. Sports World at 4. All here on NBC and Channel 14. 55 seconds to go. Johnson being worked on. 50 seconds. 56-47. A nine-point bossy lead. This is one of the few times in this ballgame that Princeton has had a height advantage. But they have it right now. Down to 30 seconds. Johnson, of course, coming back. He is only a junior. Although they lose Dowell, which is an awful lot, the Bulldogs don't be shedding any tears. They got a lot of people coming back once their season ends. 12 seconds. Now Kendrick starts the move. Chestnut, a little long. Chris Johnson and a foul on Brian Price. Boy, he, yeah, he caught him right on the arm. That was a good hard foul. It sure was, and, and it was really uh, too bad because it looked, uh, for Princeton, because it looked like Johnson would not have made that shot. Yeah. Uh, that, was, yeah, that was just a, that would have been a very poor shot. Tough to tell 15 and 60 year olds that, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's Chris Johnson, a lefty. Puts it up. Three seconds remain in the third quarter. Here's truly Mike Blake along with Chuck Lofton and Jim Roush. Hope you're enjoying this regional final. And Johnson gives him a 10-point lead. That should be it. Kendrick intercepts. One second. It'll be out of the ballpark. And we're coming back for the final eight minutes at Roberts Stadium this season in high school basketball. Coming up right after this. up. And Victor brings it down. Dowell is sitting on the pines at the moment. Schaefer, little size of baseline, momentarily loses it, gets it back. Now down to Victor. He loses it. Some wild exchanges. And this is Evie Waddell directing things as he gets it over to Friel. Like we're going to see a four-cornered offense here. Take some time off till we get the other men back in. The dog whipping it around. You've got Waddell and Friels out front. You've got diminutive Robert Calhoun down in the corner. He's out of your picture right now. In the middle is David Kendrick. Well, on the baseline at the top of your screen, Chestnut. Here's a cross to Calhoun. Back out, and they'll do it again. They've down to 650. Bossy, 10 point lead. And a foul on Joel Warren. A 6 well, 2 sophomore. Eventually, when uh, as Bossy does that, as with any offense, the defense is usually the first one to give in and not the offense to make a mistake. It's usually the defense that does it. I think they're just trying to play, run some time off, and then work for a foul. Yeah. Especially with Dow and uh, sitting out. Well, Bossy's up by 10, and we have just a little over six minutes left to go. It's really going to have to, uh, to just go at the bucket. If you play the percentages, fellas, this is the guy to foul. Evie shoots 43% from the line. And the percentages work this time. 6.40 to go. The Tigers get it back, but they're 10 down as the Bulldogs lead and are 10 minutes away from their 25th win. Victor tries to go up with it. Here's the pass to Priels. Up and in. That's when Bossy looks the best, didn't it? Yeah, he didn't have the ball a lot in the third quarter, but uh, when he has had it, he has, he's been a very good contributor in this game. He gets it again, and this good. time it goes in. I That's tell you, contributor Victor right there. is not very showy, or, but I tell you, he gets the job done, doesn't he? I'll take him. I'll take him, too. 24 points for Brad Victor. Again, Derek Dowell, the super talent of the Bulldogs, with four fouls, is not playing at the moment. A foul on Kendrick. 
Jay, David Kendrick with his second personal. Let's, this, uh, let's see how it happened. Yes, I, I didn't see that in the actual. Uh, Collecting the foul is he just Schaefer. He just makes contact with him as he goes up. They've called that a lot tonight. They sure have. Yeah. That's his third personal as Chris Schaefer goes to the free throw line. Jim Mann also excels in the classroom, they tell me. Excellent student. Eddie ball player, and he handles it well for a forward. That's not that forwards can't handle the ball, but I mean, he, he, does, he, can, he can bring it up the court right, if he has right. to. He hasn't had to, uh, but he's sure capable of doing it. Schaefer looking for his 13th point and gets it. He averages 14. Six minutes to go. It's a 59, 51, eight point bossy lead. What a year it has been for the Scarlet and, and Gray, the bossy Bulldogs. Kendrick down in the paint, and in. 12 points for Kendrick. Kendrick, a Culver elementary product. He bossy just went to a 2-3 zone, just a good 2-3 zone now. They're going to try to... About what time do you bring a guy like Dahl back? Here's Victor. Is there a third well, time on the clock? I don't know. I, I think that's just up to the coach. Uh, what his philosophy is. If Victor keeps scoring, I'd bring him in real soon. 5.14 to go. Waddell loses it. Joe Warren with a steal. It's a 61-53 lead. Princeton now will try to get back within six points. Schaefer looks for help. Takes it around and a foul on Robert Calhoun, and he knew it. Robert raises that hand quickly, and here comes Mr. Dow. The top dog is coming back in as we take another look. All right. As he moves around or he just slaps him right on the arm, you can see it. It's very obvious. It's a good call. He knew he did it. We asked when it was time to bring Dow in. I think it's right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were talking about Schaefer being a good student, and also you were talking to uh, Dick Walters at halftime about Schaefer. In this age of tougher eligibility requirements oh. uh, because of the NCAA, a, a player like Schaefer is the kind of player coaches are looking for. You bet, Chuck. The kid's probably going to be able to write his own ticket if he stays healthy. and Because uh, he's already a very, very fine, skilled, and as we know, a well-coached young man. 4.45 to go. Calhoun for the exhibition. Loses it. Hughes and... Calhoun will jump it up. Hughes tried to release it to a fleeting Joe Warren. This is the match that we talked about the game before the game where we thought was going to be uh, materializing something. So now they're jumping center. <laughs> Both men getting an A in four burns. Both well-built athletes. Hughes is at 5'9", so he, he gives about an inch away to the to the taller Calhoun, but the Tigers get the ball. Four and a half minutes. Princeton trying to get back in this contest. The Bulldogs leading 61-53. Victor, he draws a terrific round and puts it in. Boy, he shot through trees and still hit. He just shot right over Dow's hands. 28 points for Brad Victor. Four minutes to go. A six-point ball game as the Bulldogs pull it out again. Into the middle to Kendrick. David Kendrick with a big bucket. 14 points. Again, the winner of this game will meet the winner of the Terre Haute South Silverdale. Schaefer down to Victor. We're going to let him shoot. Boy. Dow has to stand there. He's got four personals. Waddell across. You know, earlier in the game, I, I wondered why Dow didn't exert himself more defensively as Bossy turns it over. Maybe, maybe Dow knows more than we think about pacing himself. Joe Mullen shooting some instructions. That, he had the ball a lot in that first game with Vincennes. Kid scored 39 points, and anytime anybody took a shot, it was him. 
Won't you look the momentum a little bit on the uh, offense by slowing it down, eh? Calhoun goes for the steal. 3.20 to go. Down to 3.15. Jimmy Davidson, a good outside shot. Victor, look out. In and out. Victor again and a foul. No. Schaefer. And it's in. Chris Schaefer cuts it to four. 2.50 remaining. I don't know where the whistle was on that play. A collision at midcourt. And the Tigers get it back. The Tigers were fortunate. Two players collided. Down to 2.40 to go. It's 63-59, Bossy. Schaefer down. Victor, or to Warren. Davidson pulls the trigger, and it's a two-point game. Boy, they've shown they can hang in with uh, the Bossy Bulldogs longer than 16 minutes. Time out at Roberts Stadium as Crimson is coming back. 63 to 61. We'll be right back. You haven't missed a thing. 63-61, Bossy, the Bulldogs. Have seen a lead evaporate here. Two minutes and five seconds to go in the ball game. And a foul on Jim Davidson. What has happened to Bossy here, Jim? I, I, you know, they just they just lost their desire to seem like they want to score. It seems like you want to just hang on here till this game's over, which is one of the things I've always, uh, as a coach, you know, I always, when you got down to the end, I still wanted to try to go ahead and, and score, unless it was down to the last 20 seconds. So a man who has played very well throughout his sophomore year, Robert Calhoun puts it up and won't go. So the Tigers can tie this ball game. We're under a minute, 155 remaining. Davidson, Waddell with a rebound. An important rebound by Waddell. Three sixty-one. Dow takes charge, and a rebound by Schaefer. Suddenly, the ball won't go in for the Bulldogs. A minute twenty to go. Still a sixty-three, sixty-one, Washi lead. Davidson fakes the shot. Got to get the hands in to. And a foul on Chris Schaefer, reaching over once again. The always present Evie Waddell. Big rebound. But like you said, Mike, uh, it's, all right, he just reached right over the shoulders of him. This is called a lot this year. It seems like I've seen this, this kind of a foul call more than any time. I don't know, maybe it's just a year for it. But like you said, you got Waddell up the free throw line. If you want somebody shooting it, uh, if you're from Princeton, you'd like him to shoot it. 109 on the clock. Jim Jones just said, call a timeout, whether they do or not, and they are. He had just signaled, and Chris Schaefer said, we're going to take a timeout. 109, gentlemen, it's turned into a dandy. Yes, it has, and uh, I think Jim, as he mentioned a bit earlier, Bossy has just, uh, you know, whether they've lost the desire to get the ball in the bucket or, or what, you know, well, the last play when Dowell missed that, that uh, play where he was right at the basket, he just doesn't miss those. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that sometimes happens when you go to a four-corner offense or you try to slow down, uh, maybe to take the, a little time off the clock, but not lose that momentum to, to keep uh, taking that ball to the basket for the score. Uh, that's not to take anything away from Princeton. Uh, they have oh, played no. a super, they super sure have. Have. And I think there were a lot of people who came to Robert Stadium tonight for this final that did not expect it. They have just hung in there, and, of course, uh, when you have some scoring like uh, Victor showing this why, you know, that, that means a lot, too. Brad Victor has had a sensational night after an 18-point first-half effort. He's come back with 12 this half for 30 on the night unofficially. 109 as Evie Waddell, a very talented junior for the Bulldogs out of Harper Elementary, and one of the main cogs in this bossy machine. But once again, Evie can't get it to drop. So Princeton, who has had its best gun from out, fire blanks on the last two trips, Jim Davidson will get another chance. We're under a minute, 54 seconds. We 
may get an overtime, guys. Hughes draws a lot of crowds. Schaefer, 40 seconds. Jason Hughes. Waddell. Still baseball and all the way up. Ball goes out, and it goes to Princeton. Went off Calhoun's leg. Calhoun and Kendrick trying to retrieve it. As you can see, this crowd is on its feet here. 32 seconds as Princeton brings it up. Do you call a timeout? I think that's kind of, I, I don't know how many timeouts they got left there, but I think I would. We got to get organized here. 25 seconds. Princeton trailing with the ball. You need help. 15 seconds. Davidson, a third time. Time. Eight. 10 seconds to go. Nine. Eight. Well, time is called with three seconds. Wow. Three to go with three ticks. It's 63 all. Okay, Jim, well, you've been in this situation turned before. Out. Well, all right. We've got three seconds, plenty of time. There's plenty of time to get the ball in. The ball's out up here at this end of the court, so there shouldn't be any time. Should be any reason to hurry the shot. We can get it in. They can figure out just what they want. Of course, I think you all know pretty much you want to try to get it into Dow. I think that's the key right. thing. Uh, or at least get it in there close for a close-in shot. Okay, defensively, what do you do? Defensively? Well, I, I, I would be doing just what Prince has been doing. They're going to have to drop back in there in a, a zone, try to stay around Dow. Yet at the same time, they got to cover that 14, 15-foot shot. You got to give Fossey a lot of credit to get it down across court. Boy, getting it, to, you know, where they can take it out at half court. Yes. Or can you take it out under underneath? Since they he got it all the way down into the corner, does that make any difference? Well, no, I wouldn't say it makes any difference. No, they're going to set up. Three seconds is a long time to get a good good shot when you're down this half the court. Well, the people who saw Memorial and North Boy are still sitting in shock as Brian Miles with one second won a ball game going the length of the court. So here you have the state's top-ranked Bussy Bulldogs trying to end this one in regulation. There could be an offensive shove here, too. That's another thing you got to watch. Look at uh, Dow and uh, Victor right now. See, there was one. Here's Frios. We're going to overtime. Overtime, overtime at Robert Stadium. The score is 63 all. A tremendous comeback. Down 57 to 47 after three quarters. The Princeton Tigers have come back. You know, we've seen a lot of ball games uh, in this course of the season. Some, some dandies, Bossy and North here at Roberts Stadium among the great ones that we've seen. But this has been a fantastic comeback by Princeton. Well, I think this will give us all the indication. Now we'll watch this play again. He has a pretty good shot there. Boy, and you had thrills, your hot gun shooting it. And he actually gets another shot off. Whether that would have counted or not, I don't know. I, I thought, don't know. I, think I, that I the, thought uh, the horn had already yeah, sounded. Yes. It was in his hands when the horn sounded. So basically, he just had one shot. Well, now we're going to really see how, how Bossy can dig down deep. And for Princeton. Right. So now, Derek Dow, there you see the Bulldog. Derek Dow firing up. He again played much of that fourth period with four fouls. 63 all. Brad Victor coming out with a 30 point night to his credit. Put three minutes on your clock if you're keeping tabs. Again, delighted to be with you for the regional finals live from Robert Stadium. Bossy and Princeton. Both teams had a much easier time of it this afternoon. Princeton with a 64-48 win over Boonville. Bossy in a hard fought, but still very convincing. A 66-55 win over Vincennes. Now, they're going into the extra frame, 63 all. Schaefer hit the deck, but it's Hughes that retrieves it. Jason Hughes played again a very fine floor game. to go. I think they're doing the right thing here. Schaefer. 
He wants to come out. They want him to come out. They want him to come out. Gabler down low. Nice pass to Warren. Can't go. Again, Waddell with a very big rebound. Princeton killed about 52 seconds on the clock. So now Bossy in command as Hughes kicked it into the press row. Actually, Waddell has made three or four key rebounds. Yes, he certainly has. Kendrick to Calhoun over to Waddell. 1.50 to go. Still tied, 63 all. The Bulldogs have been on that 63 spot for a long time. Chestnut in the middle now. Now down low to Dow. Bingo. And the big dog does it again. 1.30 to go. Bossy with a two-point lead. Calhoun applying the pressure. Schaefer to Victor. Turns around. Well, Victor with his 32nd point. And an offensive foul on Robert Calhoun. Hughes was in position on that play. Right. Watch it again. He has position. Taking the charge is Jason Hughes. The game is tied, 111 all, and believe me, much of this crowd of 7,919 is still here and is on its feet. 65, 65, Princeton trying to knock off what no other team has done this year and what no other team has done since the state finals last year beat the top-rated Bossy Bulldogs. 55 seconds. Well, there's no one even getting underneath the basket. Schaefer. No 35. Hughes. Back out to Davidson. The 30 seconds. We'll probably go and stick their fans here shortly. 20 seconds. Again, Dow has, has four fouls as Davidson brings it across. Down to 15. To wait for Fitzer to make his move. Ten seconds. Davidson finally gets it and turns it over. Davidson turns it over. Ten seconds on the clock. Time out again. Okay, Jim. All right. Yeah, that's this is a re hey, listen, this is the reason we have you here. Now, certainly I would, uh, uh, in, uh, in these games like this, there's a 10-second play that I always had ready to go. Oh, and this uh, move here, he here's just, Davidson when he, oh, yeah. when he loses. He just, uh, he just momentarily it looked like bumbled Jeff, the ball. Credit Jeff Chestnut, number 41, right. was helping him out. There's the bossy Bulldog. Starting to go bananas here. 10 seconds in the overtime. We are tied at 65 all. I'm sure that uh, Coach Mullen has a, some kind of a, a move that he works on in the 10 seconds to go. Jeff, this is no time for you to go for a hot dog. Wow. We haven't seen one like this uh, in quite some time here. They will, of course, take the ball out at the end of the court since that's where all this skin dig went on. So they have 10 seconds to go to the length of the court. Of course, you got to be careful that you don't foul. Get the ball in. Hughes will be the only man. And Dow calls another timeout. Uh, they wanted to see what, what type of say, just find out what, what they're kind of defense they're in, and then they'll try to go from there. Well, the way they were setting up, Jim Jones was, uh, was uh, pushing back five. He was going to be the only man on the near the far side of the on the near side of the court. Everybody else is going to be in back of the half court line. You want to try to see what kind of a, a long pass you can make. After we recover from this, fellows, tomorrow, Mom, get your breakfast out of the way early. The brunch, the ACC, which is one of one of the great basketball conferences in the country, will have its championship game at noon. 
2 p.m. will take you down to Florida for the Bay Hills Golf Classic and Sports World at 4. And Saturday, next Saturday, we'll see the survivor of this overtime thriller between Bossy and Princeton. We'll see him at 10 a.m. Evansville time next Saturday. We're going to see the height in there now. Uh, Davidson, the, the short guy, is out. Number 23, uh, Joel Warren, who, uh, what does he stand? 6'2 is in. They're trying to get as much height in there as they can. Even though Warren is uh, listed as a guard, he does have that forward height. Calhoun to Kendrick, down to eight. Five seconds. Right now, five. Waddell from three points. That's the end of the overtime. We're going to another one. One official almost signaled like a jump ball, but instead, time had elapsed. We're still tied. It's the end of the second overtime, or first overtime, 65 all. All right? I don't know. You just uh, you just hope uh, that in Boston's uh, shoes there, they might have got a little better shot than that. But, uh, yeah. that, but I, you, have to, you have to give Princeton credit. They, they've done a good job. Evy Waddell with some critical free throws taking the what turned out to be the final shot of the overtime both teams scored only two points in those three minutes a very cautious overtime understandably so so they will try it again we'll try to get you some other scores we know that washington has advanced i believe 69 to 64 so the hatchets and craig neal are going to terre haute we're still waiting on terre haute south and cloverdale you know, whoever loses this game, it's going to be heartbreaking because... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. They both played out standing. Yes, they have. They made, each made a comeback. Once again, Brad Victor, who is in very good shape foul-wise with two. Derek Dow with four. Jumping it up here, the second overtime, 65 all. And Princeton has gotten the last three jumps. Hughes wants, wants Taylor out. I believe the way Princeton handles the ball, they're one of the better handling ball clubs that Bossy's run into, and that's one of the reasons they've been able to stay in this contest. Bossy's used the man-to-man the man where they were in the zone a while ago uh, on the first uh, overtime. Be interesting to see now. Victor up, bouncing it in. Brad Victor continues. A tremendous offensive show. 2.15 left in the overtime. Bossy trailing by two. Princeton just in a tough zone defense. Waddell gets it down to Dow. Puts it in. That was Schaefer that hit the deck. I think there was a little lack there. That wasn't yeah. that much of a... Dow with 18 points. You know, I have been uh, uh, impressed in the... Now we're in the second overtime. Calhoun, of course, is just a sophomore. But uh, he has shown a lot of savvy and a lot of maturity, even though he is so young. 151 remaining. Davidson gets it across. Mission accomplished. Now they'll try to break the deadlock once again. We're tied at 67 all. Schaefer back out to Taylor. This is no place for the faint of heart. The Bulldogs and Princeton fans, a legion of red in the stands, all standing. 7,900 plus watching this. Almost a turnover. Down to a minute 18 on the clock. Needs help. Back out to Davidson. Down to a minute five. Both teams well schooled in a delay. Putting on a show here. Shaper down to the paint. Loses it. David Kendrick with a big steal. 45 seconds to go as the dogs come up court. And we're tied, 67 all. And Mullen is telling his players, slow it down. Be patient, they're going to call a timeout. 
Well, each time they call timeout, they've had three seconds, they've had 10 seconds, now they got 39. It is 67 to 67, 39 seconds, and if you just joined us, first of all, where were you? You missed a good game. And uh, second of all, thanks for joining us because we still got a good one. We're in the second overtime here, and we are live at Robert Stadium. Either one of these teams will probably be too tired to cut down the nets. They'll be very happy and relieved. But as we mentioned, mentioned earlier, here we're going to take another look at a steal, a very big steal. Kendrick comes in from the blind side. And nice play. Nice play. He's left-handed anyway, so he just reached near that good left hand and made a nice steal. Well, if we have to, we'll go to a third overtime. As Princeton breaks from the huddle. The big guy, number 41, Brad Victor. What an offensive night. 34 points unofficially. Derek Dow has 18. Mark Friel has turned silent. He hasn't shot much in those two overtimes or in the fourth quarter. But he has over 20 points to his credit. 21 to be exact. 35 seconds to go. The Dogs trying to pull out win number 25, and it's been a struggle. They led by 13 points on a couple of occasions, only to see it evaporate with a 63-all in regulation. It was 65-all after the first overtime. 12 seconds. 10 seconds. Kendrick now starts it in motion. Down. Good away. Five off, off of Mark Fields with five seconds to go. And we're going to a commercial. We'll be back right after this. With four fouls through the overtime. David Kendrick, Evie Wandell, Mark Fields, and Robert Calhoun. Now, Victor, Kip Taylor, Jimmy Davidson, Chris Schaefer, and Jason Hughes. They will get the basketball. Five seconds. They'll have to take it the length of the court. Four. Hughes goes down. It'll be Bossy's ball. Bossy's ball with two seconds to go. You know, in the first overtime, Bossy uh, took the ball with three okay. seconds left. Here's the play again. It's just a... I think he fell over his own I foot there. I, I couldn't see a trip It's hard to tell if maybe he, he touched the side of Kendrick's foot. Yeah, I could have. In the first overtime... Bossy had the ball with three seconds left. Now they have it with two seconds left and have a chance to win it. Tough play for Princeton. Yeah, that was a tough uh, break, kid. Tough break or not, the Bulldogs now go to the drawing board as we look in on their huddle. Once again, Joe Mullen and his staff earning their salary. What a night it has been. As the Princeton Tigers have come to town, they were 18 and 5 this afternoon. They're 19 and 5 at the moment. And if they win their 20th, it will be their biggest win in many, many, many games, perhaps in many years for Princeton. A decided underdog and a 10 point deficit going into the fourth quarter. But Bossy had its problems, but give the state's top ranked team a lot of credit. As Ebby Waddell brings it in. Dow turns around, shoots, and we're going to overtime again. Derek Dow could not hit it. Guys, let's catch our breath. Mom and Dad, don't go away. We're coming back right after this. He's got the tip every time on these overtimes. That's right. That's right. So much for news watch at 10. We'll have to hurry if we're going to get get it, guys. Right now, third overtime. Three minutes on the clock again. Victor and Dow. Batted around. This time it's real. Over to Waddell. And Evie brings it out. 63 all at the end of regulation, 65 after the first OT, 67 all after the second, and that's where we stand. Kendrick down, nice move, and a foul on Chris Schaefer, number 35. You know, it's, it's uh, important to remind uh, the viewers that Dowell still has four fouls. Uh, 
I don't know if that's something that Princeton's going to try and work on. I, would, I doubt it. I doubt that I think they're probably just going to try and get the ball in the bucket. But that is something to remember. David Kendrick, a 57% shooter, fires the blank on the first attempt. That, that rim's got to look like a like a hole on some of my putts. <laughs> Two dog on small. Oh, and it knocked right out of it. So Bossy cannot cash in. 2.30 to go in the third overtime. Still tied, 67 all. Calhoun picks up the first of all after some fine dribbling by Jason Hughes. Here it is again. He just covered him a little too close and just couldn't stay away from him. He goes around there. He just made body contact. Just like in an accident, if you hit somebody from behind, it's pretty tough to be your fault, right? Right. If you're, so, the, guy, if you're the guy in front. Prince has been real cool when he's overtime. And Hughes gets the roll, and Princeton gets the lead. He has only three points, but boy, are they big ones. All from the line. Here come the Bulldogs again, trailing 69-67, 2.05 to go in the third overtime. Kendrick. Keep in mind, Waddell and Freels have never played in a losing game at Bossy High School. Derek Dow hasn't lost in Evansville in his last two years. Almost loses the ball, and Mr. Dow puts it in. The big D. We're tied again with a minute 25 to go. 69 all. Turned it over. Robert Calhoun with the defense, and Jimmy Davidson turns it over. So the dogs get it back with a minute 20 to go. He throws it away, and it comes. It'll go back to Princeton. Jim, another two feet, you and I could have caught that. Yeah, we've been in the ball game on that one. So both teams feeling the heat, and they should. It's the third overtime. 105 to go. 69 all. Princeton with the basketball. Pictures, the big the big point producer he has 34 you're watching high school regional action on the drive in Jason Hughes with a super drive Kendrick counters it's in and a foul on Chris Schaefer well that's probably the last thing in the world that the Princeton Tigers wanted to do is commit a three here it is again. All right, you notice uh, he just drives right on in there. It's a super drive. He's around in there. He's left-handed anyway. He's on the side, hits the glass. David Kendrick with a tremendous effort. His 10th point of the night. I beg your pardon. His 10th point of the, what is now in the second half. 31 seconds on the clock. He ties the ball game up. Schaefer becomes an endangered species with his fourth foul. Schaefer and Dow have four, and we're taking another timeout, this time Princeton. Once again, basketball tomorrow. Don't forget the ACC at 12 noon, then the Bay Hill Golf Classic at 2, and Sports World at 4 o'clock. I mean, Guys, it'll be a shame whoever has to lose this sure ball. Is. 
when you get into uh, three overtimes, it, it's got to be a shame for whoever's going to lose. And right now, you know, you can see the tension just mounting a little bit more because they realize we're getting down to the end and somebody's going to have to lose here for long. I think Princeton proved one thing in this game, and that, uh, that is that uh, I think the knock was against them going into this is that they probably would make a good first half out of it, but then they couldn't keep up with Bossy. Well, they have kept up with him, not only through two halves, but also through three overtimes. I keep getting the feeling, though, when this gets down to the end, Victor's going to have something to do with it, you know, yeah. a shot yeah. or something. Boy, you talk about a sleeping giant. Oh. Uh, or Dow. What a money player Derek Dow has been again. Again, he has four fouls, has had four fouls since late in the third quarter. But the big dog is still around, number 40 in red. And his teammate, David Kendrick, goes to the stripe, trying to break the ice. And he does not. Ball goes out of bounds, white ball. 29 seconds, Princeton will bring it up. Hughes, a very fine ball handler, brings it across, 23 seconds. I'm sure the rest of the state is aware of what's happening, and a timeout with Princeton. Guys, if we go to four overtime, somebody's going to going to lose it, I think. Almost. You know, I think uh, Princeton, the guard play has impressed me. I, I didn't know that their guards, their guards have improved a lot in this season. I think Six, that's 16 seconds. Once we do resume it, you'll look in on Bossy. The guard play has been an outstanding. Yes, uh, Davidson and Hughes. You know, now Hughes has not been as visual, maybe in this game, as he was in the earlier game against Boonville. But he still plays very well. well. He's a poor leader. Once again, Mike, I think here with 16 seconds to go, we're going to see that ball in Victor's hands hit. Like the, that's what we thought. And then again, you may see poor Derek Dow's going to have to do something. He won't let him. Yeah, yeah I don't think he's going to let him shoot. It, it but of course, he has. Victor gets the ball. There's the story. 16 seconds to go. We are in the third overtime. You're watching Evansville High School IHSAA Tournament Basketball live on WFIE-TV, Channel 14 in Evansville, Indiana. Mike Blake along with Chuck Lofton and Jim Roush. Delighted to be with you. We hope you're enjoying the inconvenience of a delay here. You're seeing one of the best played high school games of the season and in a long time, stolen by Dow, 14 seconds. Dow gets oh, the back play. Time is called. Derek Dow to Freels with nine seconds to go. Bossy has the lead. It looked like we were going to have yet another turnover that has plagued these overtime periods. Now watch it again on the replay. Just beautiful uh, control of his body to control that ball and keep it, just keep it alive down here at this end. The ball goes a little errant here. It hits off the board. Comes Dow saves it. There again, you don't teach that in the textbook. And Mr. No. Friel, as he's done so many times, puts in a critical basket. That ball was headed for the cops who were standing at the <laughs> end of the court. And it, Dowell really did come out of nowhere. He put on a, a, a second wind, whatever you call it, and, and reached around there. And Dr. Friel's had the medicine right yes, there underneath, did. didn't he? Boss Dog hugging the gorilla in the bossy cheering section. So now, Bossy regains the momentum, but nine seconds are left as you look in on the Princeton Tigers. That is Chris Schaefer being attended to. Joe Mullen sends his troops back on the court. There's one of the younger members of the Kennel Club expressing his feelings as the Bulldog looked like a blowout, then went to sleep, and now are back. On top, 73-71, nine seconds to go as we take the long look. Taylor in to Hughes. Hewer down to Schaefer. Five. One second. And a timeout. Wow. Chris Schaefer. Boy, he was there. Under the under the bank board, laid it back. Let's what a beautiful hit. move. Hughes was the catalyst. Under the under the bank board, come back, lays it back, oh, left-handed. Beautiful, beautiful, wasn't it? That's tremendous. That's a blue chipper play right there. 
Okay, Jim. I don't think we can stand another three minutes, can we? <laughs> well, we got two seconds left on the clock, and uh, we're gonna, we're going to have to. Oh. Talk about Saturday Night Live, 73 all. Robert Stadium is absolutely rocking. Two seconds to go in the third overtime, and it's now 73 all. You have to go the length of the court in two seconds now, and you have to, uh, I would imagine. You have to set something up long yeah. here, a long pass. You've got to have One a long pass. One pass, and then the shot. Right. And basically, you know, team practice, this is one you think, well, you never have to use it, but a lot of times, you, you, you know, you have to pull it out. You know, and you, you also have to wonder, is it a long two seconds or is it a short two yeah, seconds? that's another thing. Is it, is it a, a situation where it's just under three or is it a situation where the clock is almost at one but still sticking on two? You've got to be careful of a foul here now, too. Two seconds. Dow brings it in. Waddell. One second, there's the horn, we're heading for the fourth overtime. Put another three minutes up. <laughs> Don't you dare leave. Again, Jason Hughes reminded me of Danny Ainge a couple years ago as he riddled the Notre Dame defense in the NCAA right. tournament, taking it dribbling uh, almost the length of the court. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, he, you know, that's that, penetration plus. That's been the key why Bossy hasn't been able to pull this game away because the guard play has been able to, to bring that ball up or against uh, Bossy guard. That's the first time I've seen that this, this year. You, you know, Hughes is not afraid to drive for a guard, and that's what we've been seeing in teams that have, that have played uh, Bossy this year. The guards would get maybe as far as the top of the key, and they were just cold as ice trying to, trying to penetrate from that. But we've seen some very aggressive play, as you mentioned. He doesn't have any emotion on his face at all. No, does he, he doesn't. He just... Once again, for the team that wins this outstanding ball game, they'll go to Terre Haute, play at 10 a.m. Obviously, to survive three overtimes, just, we, we use the cliche, mentally tough. These two teams have, been, have showed it in, in full houses. They have been outstanding. Normally about now, there should be a lot of uh, muscle cramps and spasms showing up when you play this long and it's just tense. News watch to follow after the fourth overtime, if it ends in four overtime. 73 all, three minutes on the clock. Dowell and Victor leave the floor. And Waddell, and we'll try it again. Contrary to a lot of the jump balls in the tournament, the MCC tournament, these refs are throwing it up pretty well. They haven't had to... Of course, they got a lot more practice than the college guys. And Waddell gets it to Calhoun. You know, you keep waiting for one of these teams in these overtimes to pull ahead by four or six points, and it's not happening. It's been a basket each time, hasn't yes. it? Or three throws. And then over two points, these baskets have been matched. Robert Calhoun. Looking things over, down to 235. Schaefer went for the steal. Waddell picks up the pace. Reels on the drive. Reels gets it back, and a traveling call. It'll go over to Princeton. Boy, we've seen them do that a dozen times, but they make it usually. 225 is Jason Hughes. What a valuable commodity he's been tonight. Sets it up. Down to Victor. A collision, no whistle, and Ebby, the ever-present Waddell, clears the board. An official timeout. He wants to wipe off the floor. They were fighting underneath there and a lot of perspiration on the floor. Victor did not have a real good angle on that shot. No, he didn't. He... Down to 212. We're in the fourth overtime. That's why. News has gone over time. Nice to have you all with us, Tri-State. Mike Blake along with Chuck Lofton, Jimmy Roush. Hope you're enjoying a classic from Robert Stadium. Bossy, top-ranked Princeton. An underdog are in the fourth OT, both trying to get to Terre Haute, but the ticket has been hard to come by as both these teams have been superb. Calhoun fans out. Kendrick puts it up. Traveling call to go back to... Princeton. Well, that's uh, the past two times they've had the ball in this the fourth overtime. They've committed traveling violations. Both teams playing on reserve tank. The adrenaline has to be sky high. Schaefer looking 
Schaefer fans it out. Victor with a shot. Brad Victor, the smoking gun, gets it every once in a while, but boy, has he done the damage. Unofficially, 36 points for Brad Victor. Princeton again on top by two. Bossy takes it down to 115. Kendrick takes it up. David Kendrick again delivers. 105. Jimmy Davidson, the smallest man on the court at 5'6". He's to blame for all of this. He put it in overtime the first time. Victor, no good. Battling around. It's on the floor. Schaefer. Great second effort. Chris Schaefer, who put us in the fourth overtime, puts it on top for Princeton. 35 seconds to go. Dow, a collision and a foul on Kip Taylor. Boy, every fan in the bossy section had to feel a tart come up in his mouth that time. Yeah, those are ones you, you don't know which way they're going to go till the official calls. Derek Dow sticks around. A, an amazing athlete has played since late in the third period with four fouls. He took a seat much of the fourth quarter. Now he will try to deliver again from the free throw line where he shoots at a 71% clip. 32 seconds remaining as Dow steps up. He again has had a great night. Little short. Victor with a rebound. Bossy has got a problem. They're down by two. 25 seconds and a foul. Chris Schaefer. Schaefer is hobbling. Davidson goes over to talk to Jim Jones. 26 seconds remaining. As Jason Hughes who is four for four from the line, stepped up. Princeton can make it awfully, awfully tense here. They lead by two, 26 seconds in the fourth overtime. That's the first time we've had a three-point lead in it. And what a time to get it. Here come the Bulldogs, 25 seconds. Waddell loses it. Hughes and a foul on Evie. Evie Waddell has fouled out. And Princeton smells the upset with 20 seconds remaining. Let's look at it again. Yeah, it was pretty easy to see there. You don't even have to talk about that one. the state's longest win streak is in jeopardy. 20 seconds to go is Jason Hughes, another candidate for MVP honors. You got to give Victor the lion's share for the early going, but Hughes has been superb. You know, 20 seconds is a long time, but a five-point lead, you uh, you would be prompted to sing goodnight, Eileen. That's, it's going to be hard to come yes, back. It's very difficult. But the Bulldogs have been down before. Six points. Here they come. Pressure applied. Calhoun down to 18. Baseball's it down to Friels. He loses it. Victor, 12 seconds, and a foul on David Kendrick. He had to foul him. Uh, there was basically nothing else he could yeah. do if they want to get the ball down. Well, it's kind of a hopeless cause right now, yeah. I'd say. This is one of the... This is the hardest sport of uh, athletics. What has been a phenomenal, marvelous year for the Bossy Bulldogs appears to be over. 11 seconds on the clock. But they're going out in style. They've gone to a fourth overtime. They look like they were well, well on their way to a 25th win. But it appears not to be. Brad Victor can't get it. Down to 10 seconds. Dow. Down to Chestnut, it's in. Time is called with five seconds. It's a four-point ball game. Well, what can you say? It, we've had just about everything we wanted here tonight. <laughs> well, the uh, for Princeton, the best possible thing they could do is nothing. 
basically stand there right now. Right, right. The worst thing they could do is commit a foul. We're still waiting to hear on the Terre Haute South. The press row, everybody's asking each other here. We do not know, but I guarantee you that Mark Howard will be on the horn to Terre Haute to let us know momentarily. Terre Haute South and Cloverdale will meet the winner of this game. It's all over. The biggest upset of the year as Princeton wins the Evansville Regional, knocking off previously unbeaten and top-ranked Bossy in an amazing high school game for overtime. Look at the, I think you're, I'm impressed by the sportsmanship, Jimmy Roush. Yeah, I am too. I sure am. A lot of great talent on this court, and what a, what a marvelous ending for Princeton, and what a, what a terribly disappointing kill. Rowan comes across. This is some bitter pills to take in, the, in a game like that. And I think you know this early this evening. I said if, if Princeton plays as good as their coach looks tonight in that suit, they're going to win. Congratulations to Jim Jones and the Princeton Tigers. Brad Victor, number 41 in white, 36 points unofficially. <laughs> Bucky Bulldog, Derek Dow, in a tremendous effort. We're going to try and get some interviews for you. He came in with 20 points unofficially. Mark Friel, an amazing night, 24 points. As we're about to have Jim Jones, as he salutes the Chuck, take it away. Our turn. We've been here four times. We got beat on the last second shot. We got beat in the triple overtime tonight. We go four. Maybe it just takes four overtimes for us to win. I don't know. I imagine you're pretty pleased with the way Hey, yeah, I'm pleased with the way every young man in our program performs tonight. Any last uh, remarks uh, for Joe Mullen? Oh, great team. It was just one of those situations we could probably play 50 times if you win 49. We won the one that counts. Coach, congratulations. Thank That's you very much. school game I've ever seen. Mike, back to you. Thank you, Chuck. A humble and a very well-deserving Jim Jones, class coach, and uh, what a he's boy. A, he's a class guy. It couldn't happen to a nicer person. And a class. Our congratulations to Joe Mullen, to the bossy contingent for a great year. What a tough way to end it, 82 to 77 in a fourth overtime. Tri-State, that is it for this week. We'll see you from Terre Haute. We'll take the Princeton Tigers, where they'll be going on in the Indiana State Tournament. But for now, from Robert Stadium, for Jim Roush, for Chuck Lawson, for Bob West, and all of our people, we thank you for watching in this IHSAA basketball game. What an amazing contest. Four overtimes. Princeton wins over Bossy, 82-77. to 77. For now, this is Mike Blake wishing you a very pleasant good night from Robert Stadium. Country Hearth and Spang. And by Country Hearth Bread. Locally by Lewis Brothers Bakery. And now, from Holman Center, here are Mike Blake, Chuck Lofton.